Now, in recent days, the United Nations says it's received credible reports that the Chinese government is forcing the Muslim minority Uyghur community into so-called re-education camps. A UN human rights panel has been told that Beijing has turned the northwest province of Xinjiang into a no-rights zone and a huge internment camp for this community with the aim of fighting religious extremism. China has yet to make any official comment about these reports. Well, for more on this story, we can cross now live to Washington and speak to Nuri Turkel, who, as well as being an attorney, works as the chairman of the board for the Uyghur Human Rights Project. Thank you very much for being with us here on France 24. Um, first of all, what has been your initial reaction to these reports that the UN has received? Have they come as any surprise to you? Um, First of all, I want to thank this uh, particular uh, UN body, uh, in particular Ms. McDougall, for making uh, this powerful statement and calling on attention to the worsening human rights uh, catastrophe uh, relating to, to Uyghur people in China. Um, this, has, this report has been long overdue, and, and this statement uh, came out yesterday, uh, sent a very powerful message not only to the Chinese, but also the people in the civilized world who have been told never again uh, during the Second World War. The Uyghur people is facing humanitarian catastrophe. It's a time, it requires a timely response, not by only the United States government had, that has shown public support in the recent uh, weeks, but also the European uh, democracies that you need to stand up and, 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 and call it what it is uh, with respect to the Uyghurs uh, being subject to internment camps in the 21st century on our watch. Now, the government in Beijing has yet to offer any comment about these uh, rumors and reports. What do you make of their silence? The Chinese government has a habit of uh, misinforming, denying, or fabricating uh, stories. The Chinese government has been uh, telling the world that the Uyghurs, along with the Tibetans and, and other ethnic minorities, are happy minorities in China. In fact, uh, the Tibetans and Uyghurs in particular have been subject to various forms of racial discrimination in the recent years, uh, in particular. But this, this has been ongoing struggle. The Uyghurs have been... Uh, struggling to uh, exist as a distinct a uh, ethnic uh, people. But the Chinese government see has seen Uyghur's ethno-national identity as a stumbling block for their long-term political, uh, geopolitical uh, objectives uh, to for, for a domestic consumption and also for its uh, global ambition to, um, to expand its uh, influence around the world. The Chinese government uh, have been punishing the Uyghur people as an ethnic group uh, based on their religious, ethnic, uh, religious and relig uh, ethnic identity. Uh, the Chinese government has seen Uyghur's uh, ethno-national identity as a political threat. And, and the, the, the worst part of it is that uh, this has been going on more than a year. Uh, the Western countries, uh, Western societies, uh, have not been spoken up. Only the United States government in the last couple uh, weeks, particularly, have been very vocal. Uh, uh, even Vice President Mike Pence uh, have spoken out. So I, I, I call on the uh, democracies around the world uh, who cherishes uh, individual freedom and who does not want to see the catastrophes of the Second World War uh, to happening again or history repeating itself in the 21st century. Just why, in your view, have Muslim countries remained silent on this issue, given um, that the Uyghur are, after all, the second largest Muslim ethnic group in China? It is an irony. Uh, since 9-11, the Chinese government has opportunistically used war on ter terrorism to label the entire Uyghur population as some sort of a religious uh, fanatics, uh, uh, extremists, or uh, a group of people that poses national security threat. Uh, when you look around the world, uh, anything that happens with respect to Islam or Muslim people, uh, the Muslim countries uh, allow it, it, its citizens uh, to pour onto the streets, to burn flags and, and chant anti-West, anti, particularly anti-American slogans. 
And yet when it comes to China, they've been awfully quiet. So it makes you wonder, is the, Muslim, uh, the Uyghurs happen to be wrong type of Muslim and the China happen to be a wrong type of uh, government to criticize? The hypocrisy is mind boggling. Uh, I know that I understand that uh, the Muslim countries are not exactly the beacon of hope uh, for democracy and individual freedom. But in the individual level, the human level, their uh, Muslim brothers and sisters are suffering in China. Let me give you one example. Just being a, a, a carrying a Muslim name uh, can be crime in China today. It, it sounds incredible for those of us live in a civilized world, but in fact that the Uyghur people have been punished right and left just simply because of their ethnicity, because of their religious ident uh, religious beliefs. The Muslim world has some, some level of influence uh, over China when it comes to religious freedom. For example, Saudi Arabia should use their economic uh, level, uh, leverage to convince the Chinese to at least allow the Uyghurs a basic uh, Islam uh, religious practices. Nuri Tokel, uh, Nuri Tokel in Washington, D.C. That's all we have time for, I'm afraid. Thank you very much for being with us here on uh, France 24.